This unit may be the most difficult in terms of the reading level of the assigned material, but the book Human Rights in the Constitutional Law of the United States by Michael J. Perry provides a highly informative analysis of human rights, constitutional law, and culture in the United States at a rather crucial moment in our history, as well as how these all intersect at the international level with the United Nations treaties, covenants, and conventions per our work from last week. For many of you, Professor Perry may seem a bit conservative. For others, he may seem a bit liberal. A key factor in determining whether or not a nation upholds international laws on human rights is in fact whether or not the constitution of that country upholds them or contradicts them. In the United States, we generally think that fundamental rights are protected by and embedded in the United States Constitution. Perry offers us a penetrating analysis of especially three main topical human rights areas as these pertain to our Constitution, the death penalty, restrictions on same-sex marriage, and the criminalization of abortion. He anchors his analysis in three more general guarantees provided by our Constitution, the right not to be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment, the right to moral equality, and the right to religious and moral freedom. Perry then goes on to show why the death penalty may contradict human rights as embedded in the U.S. Constitution, and how the other two bans may likewise con contradict the U.S. Constitution and the limits thereof. Start by going to the course site and the assignment folder for weeks six to seven. Begin by reading the book review by Herdoga on human rights in the constitutional law of the United States. Then listen to the podcast by Michael Perry. Next, open and print off a copy of the study guide. This will guide you through the foundation and main points of Perry's work. The book is divided into two major parts. Part one has three chapters, chapter one, two, and three, the internationalization of human rights, what is a human right versus what is a legal right, and the normative ground of human rights. Much of what we covered last week in terms of basic international treaties, covenants, and conventions. Chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 cover capital punishment, the right to moral equality, the right to religious and moral freedom, same-sex marriage, abortion, use the study guide wiki to divide the labor, share your work, check your answers, your interpretations, and your understandings. It might be easiest to put your name next to a chapter for your initial answers and then next to the chapter that you agree to check. There are 13 students in the class in nine chapters, so four of you will have overlapping work. Remember, the goal here is not to outdo anyone or outdo your peers, but rather to share and check knowledge on a very, very uh, complex topic, uh, being careful to read and understand the material. Next, 
Over the following two weeks, you must work together to complete the optional protocol column on the United Nations Convention's wiki. Work together as a class to complete that optional protocol column. My error for omitting that last week. I added a page and a column for the class. There's something important to be learned by looking at both the ratifications of the convention and its optional protocol. This will deepen your understanding of the relationship between a national culture and international law. Then, participate in the discussion. This is another week in which the discussion should add significantly to your understanding of some very difficult material. In the second week, after you have completed the readings, you might, in addition to the prompt, engage in a cordial exchange on some of the most con controversial topics in American politics today. Here it will be crucial that you maintain a high level of respect for the opinions of others, taking their post seriously, and engaging toward the goal of understanding the key ideas, their relationship to our constitutional law, as presented by Perry, and the basic issues. Finally, over the next two weeks, please return to your research topic, turning it into a research question with hypotheses or questions that can be addressed with data. At the end of week eight, you will be required to submit a statement of your thesis and an annotated bibliography which puts this thesis in the context of past research. This is an extremely interesting and engaging topic upon which we embark in week six to seven. I look forward to reading your post on the discussion forum. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have questions.